Uh, so I'll go first then. Alan's going to uh, lead on from from me. Uh, I think I've got quite a bit to live up to there, eh? and I'll I'll see if it comes across with style and substance. So Eddie could be Eddie can be the judge in that. Uh, so thanks and welcome, everybody. It's really great uh, to see so many people here, uh, certainly the offshore workforce, some onshore uh, workforce as well. Uh, the duty holders, big thanks to the duty holders and employers who uh, have supported this. Uh, <coughs> a lot of very good contributions so far. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and a lot of sit sitting and listening. As we go on through the day, the afternoon, there will be a lot more interaction. All the breakout sessions that we're hoping you'll all attend will be uh, interactive. We plan on having them like 10 minutes of telling you what the Safety Rep Central is about in the, in the three breakout sessions concerning that. Uh, and then it will be 10 minutes of questions then moving about the, the uh, other breakout sessions. There's also... Uh, within the room, there would be the other step change groups and the breakout sessions and major accident hazards have got a good presentation as well. So use the time uh, after the webinar to uh, go and do that uh, and interact, mingle, talk to each other. Uh, this is what the, the event's all about. Uh, the webinar... The webinar will make it the biggest event uh, ever for safety reps in the world, uh, as far as I know. No, it's, uh, it will be. We're getting a lot of uh, offshore platforms. There's also going to be quite a lot uh, from other parts of the world joining in, joining in. I've been informed and there's uh, people, more people promised to log in today uh, as it gets nearer uh, to the time of the event. Uh, so, like it says, this event is about questioning, it's about playing your, uh, playing your part. We are selling this with Safety Rep Essentials as a new era for the workforce, for the involvement of the workforce and the support uh, that uh, will be out there for the Safety Reps and tools you could use, logbooks you could use, things you could reference, things you could go back back to uh, and speak to OIM, speak to employing companies, speak to duty holders, speak to your uh, immediate supervisors out uh, about. And it's all about preventing major accident and major environmental hazards. So there's no pressure, that's all you have to do, okay? Uh, just, just work on that. Uh, <coughs> but there isn't. You're here because you want to be, your safety reps because you want to be, well, you better be. I hope your safety reps because you want to be. Uh, and a lot of paraphrases uh, going about. I'll paraphrase Judy Murray. Here's one. Say, a lot of people have a lot of talents, but they don't always have the same opportunities. And that's the same whether we like it or not with safety reps in the industry. There's a lot of good things happening with safety reps in a lot of places. But not everybody has the opportunity to use it and do it as others do. So the learning from each other today uh, is key in that. But the information, the guidance we're going to be supplying you with will give you that reference uh, uh, to, to use. The event itself, this took many years uh, bringing together. 2015, we started on this. And it was a challenge from industry on what good looks like. I all come from that challenge on what good looks like for safety reps and safety committees. Uh, and that's what, that's what we've, we've been uh, uh, working on, developing, trialling, uh, etc. Uh, and, and it has taken a, a lot of time to do that. The legislations for safety reps itself, 30 years old today, uh, I think all the stars just aligned to get it on a Wednesday in the middle of the week, so it's best chance for people to get from offshore assets uh, and, and come and join, join in this. But never forget, that was on, that came into force 14 months after Piper Alpha. Piper Alpha had a massive, massive effect on this, on this happening. 
and we don't want people to be lost in their lives for legislation to come into place. The legislation was actually sitting in the UK Parliament for 1986, because you had the onshore safety reps and committee regulations for 77, but they just weren't getting through Parliament uh, for one reason or another. And for 14 months for a statutory instrument to get through Parliament, it's quite breakneck speed. Uh, uh, when it comes to these kind of things. And for those who think maybe the safety rep and safety committee regulations may not be fit per for purpose now and need change, for that to happen, it needs to go through the UK Parliament. And hands up who thinks it would get through that pretty quick uh, at the moment. You know, we've got what we've got. Uh, we'll have to work with what we've got. When it's used properly, uh, it work well. It works well. Uh, for us to inspect it, for people to work with it, with, for, for people to use it, you need the tools. So this is what we're trying to deliver. Those who influence uh, and employ the safety reps need the tools. Their immediate supervisors need the tools. Those people who need to comply with health, health and safety law well, here's tools, here's guidance, here's in, hints and tips that, you, that you'll be walking out the door with uh, today uh, to use to f further the role of safety reps, safety committees, but more important than that, involving the whole workforce uh, in, in this. The constituents, they need tools to see what their safety reps could do for them, what the safety reps are there for, what they're not there for. You know. The, there's a lot of things and there's a lot of people and most safety reps will be aware at one time or another there'll be people that just want to fire get you to fire bullets for them uh, because they've fell out with a gaffer or uh, they're not happy about this and they'll just fire on a safety rep and give it you're my safety rep you go and do that for me those you're representing need to know what you're there for what you can do uh, and what you're not there for you know so uh, it's it's information uh, uh, for that as well. Like I say, we started with this 2015. The first part we got told was going to take very long and would be quite difficult, and that was updating the PO standard for safety rep training. We actually done that in, I think, about nine months, which, so we're told, was pretty, again, pretty breakneck speed uh, for that. Uh, <coughs> the rest was then gathering net evidence uh, for that. As part of the change in the training, we needed support. Uh, and as Kirsten mentioned, uh, Alan, we, we were involved in helping Great and work well. Uh, so that was getting commit commitments to health and safety throughout the UK on safety reps and safety committees. And some of this is targeted on onshore as well. This is not all just about offshore. There's a lot of offshore specific stuff. But it doesn't take a lot of imagination to change it to, to onshore. You know, the good practice stuff uh, could all, also uh, always be used. Uh, we also got uh, support from Partnership in Health and Safety in Scotland. So that, that's linked to the Scottish Government on specifically focusing on health and safety in Scotland. But all these groups and highlighting the need to have uh, good workforce engagement and good support was all very helpful to, uh, to our plan, to our uh, cause, if you like, uh, getting this out there. But we also needed evidence. So, I was fortunate enough to be seconded uh, in HSE and started working on uh, what do we need to improve inspections? Firstly, for HSE inspectors to engage uh, with the, ploy uh, with the, with the uh, safety reps at the safety rep meetings, but also, also the, the wider workforce. The first thing I noticed in that was a lot of safety reps were not seeing the uh, HSE agendas. They get sent uh, to someone on shore and they're addressed to safety reps, but not all safety reps were seeing it. If you're not seeing a safety uh, HSE safety agenda before HSE come on the platform, start asking why. If you know HSE's coming on board in a week, two weeks, a month uh, uh, in the future, ask where the agenda is. You, you, you're copying in it, you should be seeing it. We're trying to do it all by email now, but it's sometimes still uh, a wee bit tricky getting it out to everybody. So, gathering the evidence, I, I've did around 50 specific workforce engagement inspections. 
uh, offshore uh, and onshore. And there's been numerous others that have used workforce engagement. Uh, other inspectors and colleagues within HSE uh, have done the same. Uh, gathering evidence from all that, well, let's give you a clue. Out of the inspections I've been involved in, there's been three that required no enforcement action. So enforcement action from HSE could go for uh, verbal instruction, letter items, improvement notice, prohibition notice, notices. Three of them have resulted in everything's fine. I can't, you know, I'm speaking to people, you've got what you should have, uh, you know, nothing to put down. And it's great to be able to congratulate people uh, on the culture that, that, that they've done uh, on their asset and platform. But a vast room for them. Uh, improvement uh, uh, in that. The most common things, failure to apply with the safety committee side of the regulations is, is no difficult. But we've got uh, within the OIM's documentation now some guidance on that. It's just simple. It's not trying to keep, try to teach people to suck eggs or be patronising. It's just here's some tools uh, you could use it. Use. The most common for safety reps are, is around training for safety reps. A basic initial training, 90 days, should be done. I go to the training centre most weeks. I shouldn't be meeting people that are one year, 16 months, 18 months. The longest anybody has claimed to me to be a safety rep uh, and not had any training whatsoever in a safety rep is three years which is no bad going in a two-year stunt, But uh, it's, I mean, it just, it shouldn't have happened. So we've got the uh, information and, uh, for that. But again, facilities for safety, right? You've got to have facilities, right? The, there's no many rules in the offshore industry that law requires to have facilities. One of them is safety reps. So it, it's a must. These to me, are easy fixes. But again, it's getting the foundations right, it's getting the, it's getting the basics right. Uh, another thing that I get most weeks when I go to the safety reps training is their wages. The only time the health and safety executive will be involved in people's wages is safety reps wages. Because you've got to get paid when you're doing safety rep training. So we've laid out what the good practice is and what is required to comply, but, uh, comply by the law. I've even got a standard letter I get to safety reps that I just changed the name on now when I get emails on their wages. So uh, again, it's there, but it's, it's not hard to fix. And when you get people motivated and going into the role at the beginning, f you know, if they start getting annoyed about getting the training, getting their wages, getting this, you're, you're starting to sort of wear away at their voluntary status and then you may end up with reps that are just like, oh, you know what, I've done this and I can't be bothered with it. We need to nail that out. Uh, they're there to represent people. The people that they represent are the ones that should be chissing them up. It's very difficult, I feel, for supervisors, for OIMs, for employing companies to try and drag safety reps to do something. When you've got keen and eager safety reps that are willing and wanting to do it, that's it. You've you, you got, you got to let them go. Uh, we've got a lot of the stuff within this should uh, deal with some of the discrimination claims that have come into HSE about safety reps. These are real complaints that HSE will get involved in. And if any companies that are here that HSE have been involved uh, with issues raised in complaints uh, coming from the workforce, they will know the time uh, and no doubt cost that this all takes for HSE to look into it and close it out. So again, we're, we're hoping to put within this guidance or we have put within this guidance uh, information to to help that. HSE, onshore and offshore, see the engagement of the workforce uh, as a key preventive action in major accident hazards. The places that have active safety reps, functioning safety committees, have less incidents. That, that's it. You know, uh, it, it's well worth it for, for everybody to get that. So, like I say, I'll not take much more Alan's time. We believe we have produced in safety rep essentials uh, 
uh, as the West Group the answers to a lot of these questions, but this is the beginning. This is a living document. This is not, oh, we've got this, this is the end. We now need you to, to, help, support, to help support that. There's a lot of people uh, that have helped this uh, coming along. Uh, the G18, the Step Change and Safety Leadership Team, ESRs, uh, as they're now called, have, have been key in this. I've seen Jameson Ama up there. He was key in this uh, when we were kicking it off. Anne Smith, uh, Shane Gorman. There's a lot of people and too many to mention, but there's been a lot of help and a lot of very influential people and supportive people in getting where we are today. I hope you see the, the evidence of that as the day progresses. But in the breakout sessions and webinars, get questions in. If you're not sure about something, question what. Alan's going to lay out a lot more detail uh, than I've, that I have, but I've tried to give you a wee bit of the, the background of where we're coming from. Cheers. So the important thing to know here is I am the last speaker before lunch. I can see the food going out behind you, so just if you can hold on for another 15 minutes or so, and we can go and do that. So how you all doing? All good? Yeah, good, 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 good. So this journey for me started about six years ago, and it started about this reinvigoration with, with TACA. And we had a problem at the time that our reps felt disengaged, our reps felt that they just weren't being taken seriously. We were doing the same meetings all the time, talking about the same stuff, and nothing was happening. So we wanted to fix that. And there's a story about how we did. I've been to some of you as operators already. We've, we've talked about this. I'm not going to bore you with this, with this story. But there's an aspect of the story that I tend to, to forget, to tend to, to not mention. So I want to just talk about that a little bit today. Now, we invited Susan McKenzie. Did she make it today? Are you, are you here? Can't see. No. Okay. Well, is she here? Right about. Okay. Right. 2014 there was a safety rep conference. At that safety rep conference, it was about a year after we'd started, and we were, we'd gone through a process of getting people elected, getting everything done properly, but we're then at this next stage about getting this proper engagement in. And at this, this safety rep meeting, Susan in her role in the HSE stood up and she said these words, and I'm gonna butcher it a little bit. But she goes, I don't care about lids on cups, I don't care about holding the handrail. I want to know why safety reps are not telling my inspectors about holes in the temporary refuge. And it was like, oh, okay. This is the first time I'd ever heard anybody challenge safety reps. Everyone seems to dance around the subject, leaving us alone. But here was somebody that was going directly at us, going, why aren't you doing your job? Why aren't you telling us about the big stuff? That was an interesting question, and the question at the time has got some obvious answers if you're a rep. The problem is, is that it's obvious answers depending on what your role is. If you're a rep, the obvious answer at the time was, uh, I don't get time to do that, I don't know what I'd be looking at, and others people going to the point of, if I reported that, I would get into trouble. If you were a supervisor hearing that, your response would be, well, the safety reps would tell me first. Why would they tell the HSE? They need to let me know. If you were an OIM, your response could be, my safety reps just don't do that. We don't get involved in that. Or I can't get my safety reps to do that. And then finally, if you were someone that was on shore at that meeting and you were listening, your response would be, well, isn't that what we pay these guys to do? And here at that point, back in 2014, that was the state of the safety rep culture. That a legislation, a set of uh, guideline rules that we had been put in place were instead of bringing us together, were actually forcing us apart. The communication that was meant to happen between all the parties, this great gift that we'd been given as a safety committee to allow this voice was not functioning and it was being left alone. And that was what we needed to fix. So a quick poll, quick question for you now, and listen carefully, this is a bit complicated question, so do your best. Hands up, 
if you have 100% confidence that your onshore leadership guys, your team, know the safety concerns of the safety reps of each constituency, and also that each constituency knows the safety concerns of your safety leadership teams. Hands up if you believe that both parties know what's going on. So, we've seen this slide to do earlier on today with, with, with the, the iceberg. But that is where we are as an industry. Every one of us should know. There was a part of me when I was coming up with this presentation today going, at this point, if there are any senior managers in this room, if there are safety reps, I would give the whole afternoon that you could just meet and fix this and get talking. And that would do so much to, to help us out and to, to do it. But the fact that we don't know what the other ones are concerned about, that means that we're failing and we cannot do that anymore. If you do the workforce, as, as a quick aside, if you want to get a good clue as to where these issues are, you've got uh, access right now to the workforce engagement tool. And that's a tool that is on the Step Change website. And some of you have probably already done it. We advise you try and look at it every two years. When you get the report back, it gives you a list of where your grade is, one to five, gives you all pretty colors about where you are. And uh, I know my West colleagues are gonna hate me saying this, but ignore that bit of it. What you can do is all the questions, all 40 odd questions, you can reorder those questions. Some of the questions mention supervisors, some mention OIM, some mention safety reps. There's four questions on safety reps. If you separate those out, and then look at which of these numbers for, are a lower response than the, than the benchmark, that will tell you where your lack of confidence is in your communication. I guarantee it will work for you. Run that survey and look at that, and that will give you a clue on where to help you with it. So today, so why are we here? Well, we wanted, when we were planning this event, we wanted two things out of this. One, we wanted to celebrate the last 30 years of safety reps, but also we wanted to introduce these new tools. Um, and what are we trying to do with these new tools? Well, personally, I have always hated when a leader, one of our organization's leaders has said to us, we cannot achieve zero injuries. It is statistically impossible. To me, that is not a safety leader. That is a safety manager who is managing my expectations. I don't want my expectation managed that it is acceptable for somebody to get hurt. I don't believe that's what they mean when they make that phrase, but we're so used to hearing it that that's what we're doing. We're believing our safety is based on the statistics of yesterday. Now, for granted, based on how we were operating, we're doing it with one arm tied behind our back. We have all these organizations working with us throughout your, your operators and contractors, all your different teams, but we're not working together. And today, our goal is, is to give you those tools to allow you to work together so that we're all going for the same purpose. So of the three documents, the first document we've got is for onshore leadership. This is something that tends to, to not be done. We look at the OIM as the duty holder, and he's mentioned in the legislation, or they're mentioned in the legislation as the focal point for it. However, they are supported by a whole onshore team. And traditionally, these onshore teams have left you as a safety committee to operate offshore. The assumption is it's a safety committee, you know what you're doing, reps know what you're doing, and that the OIM's got a handle on it. And we all know nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, the only people that ever get trained on how to do safety reps are safety reps. All these other people that are required to support you, nobody trains them, nobody helps them. Um, so HR doesn't know what to do when we see safety reps getting appraised on their annual appraisal, which, is, which you can't do because you're doing this as a function. Uh, simple things like operations, how to work with your uh, with your teams, logistics, the contracts that enable you contractors to get on shore. It's all very well for a safety committee to go, we want you to come to this event, but when a, a contractor goes, well, we can't release them and we need to get funds to release them, we need to replace them, that information gets lost on the contractors. 
gets lost in the duty holder about how important that is. But all that stuff doesn't happen on the platform, that happens onshore, but they don't know how to support you with it. So we have come up with a guide that tells them what to do and, and gives them meaningful KPIs, gives them things to get involved with and to say, this is what a safety committee needs. This is what a safety rep needs to function. This is not isolated to an asset. The second thing that we've done is we've created a guide for OIMs and for supervisors and for anybody who is on the asset management on how to work with safety reps and how to work with committees to remove the assumptions that these people know what they're doing because we know they don't and they know that they try their best and these things and a lot of time a lot of these things that we find where we've had breaches in the regulation is because somebody's tried their best but what they've tried to do actually doesn't fit with what you're supposed to do and it's been based on the culture that we've brought with us over the last 30 years and the last thing is a safety rep guide and this focuses primarily on the functions of a safety rep your functions are, are mostly contained within section 16 and one of the things that we did was when we, we asked the training uh, opito to do this with ann smith and, and with bob was that we wanted this focus on this, this section and to remove a lot of the stuff that you're not going to use. And the training is set up now that if it's something you're only going to use once, you can read the book, you can read the regulations, but if it's something that you're doing all the time, this is now in your training and it's now mirrored in this document as well. So we cover section 16, which is your functions, and we also cover section 22, which is the functions of your safety committee. So all of these different aspects are in there, all the different things that you can do. And in this guide, we've given examples of things that you can do. And what we're trying to get away from is that the legislation is that you can only do what's in the legislation. This is a legislative document, that's all. And it is not there to limit what you can do as safety reps and as leaders. There are so many other things you can do. We actually limited the amount of activities to, to 42. Uh, activities within the document that covers the functions that you can do. You're not just meeting somebody, you're not just doing a presentation, you're not just sitting in a clinic waiting for somebody to come along. So we've done this and on top of that, on the Step Change website, we've now added some uh, tools to help you do inspections. Things to, some templates to give you questions, to get you out and about, to talk to, say, to, talk to other constituents, to talk to to see other bits of the platform so that you've got some ammunition. What we don't want you is you sitting in a, a safety rep meeting where nobody's come to you and you're having to talk about the same things and things just don't move along. So we want to help you with that. So in closing with this, I'm going to get you a wee bit of exercise. Can I ask the TACA safety reps just to stand up for a second? Don't be shy. There's two tables there. Okay. Brief example. TACA safety reps, when they followed this program, there were 65 of them. The 65 managed to achieve, in a period of four years, over 5,000 of these activities using this program. They weren't doing these activities for their OIM. They weren't doing these activities for anybody else, but for their constituents. Thank you, guys. Sit down for me. Is there any TACA management here today? Can, can you both stand up? <laughs> I'm going to embarrass you again. Why am I asking them to stand up is it is important because when we started the program off they said yes and they enabled us to do it they could have very easily said no it's a very simple thing but without their involvement we could not have got started there was a, they, they had a lot of faith in us as safety reps to go ahead thank you very much is anybody here from opito and from the training of training facilities here today okay so as we said, we were told when we started working with Apito that Apito is really tough to work with, that this is going to be a nightmare getting this training changed. But we accomplished it in nine months. They wanted to help. They saw the gaps when they meet with you all and they wanted to change it. We even found out just recently that the OIMs managed to snag a, an early version of this guidance and have been using it in their training. That's an indication to us of how much this is needed to get out there. So, if there's anybody from Petrofac here, can you please use the new guidance and get rid of your old copy? That would be nice. The legislative bodies, is anybody here from the HSE? 
Anybody here from uh, Bayes that are willing to stand? You're going to just give us a wave. There we go. Right. We needed that support. This document that Bob was talking about was a huge enabler for us because up until that point, when inspectors came on the platform, they didn't know what to ask. And they were only finding the same old things when it came to safety reps. It was not enough time, not enough training. And it's great that they do that, but there is 27 other sections in there that needed to be looked at. But nobody was able to do a deep dive to see where the problems were. So because of Bob and HSE getting this together, each inspector now has this guide and now has a lot more relevancy when they're talking to you. So make sure you talk to them. We have representatives here from Joined Up Thinking. The video that you saw today is part of what we called stage one. And when we did this, this setup, there was four stages. We wanted a stage which was before you became a safety rep, this is what it means to become a safety rep. Stage two was your PETO training. This event today is what we call stage three. And stage four is the, we're going to look at the refresher training and make sure it's right and fit for purpose. We've left it just now, but we are anticipating train, doing some changes with, it, with that as well. So Joined Up Thinking did this video for us and we're really appreciative that they did that. We've also had people today, I won't ask them to, to stand, but we've got people from, from Step Change that enabled this process. Back in 2015, we, we took the guidance that we'd originally done at TACA and then over the last couple of years we've taken that and we've adapted it, made it better for, for all of you and what you need to do. And there's been a lot of people involved in it, a lot of the safety rep team, a lot of step change, a lot of people that have come and gone uh, throughout this. So why am I mentioning all these names? Why am I mentioning the unions and all these people? Because it goes back to what Bob said in the beginning, what does good look like? That's what good looked like. It was everybody coming together to support you. We know that as safety reps, you struggle. We know that you feel alone sometimes, that nobody's helping you, that you're fighting these battles by yourself. And we wanted to stop that. We wanted to draw a line underneath that and give you the tools to engage and to get involved. So that's what we want you to do. Uh, the rest of you here that, wouldn't, that didn't stand, who, the, the ones who have got uh, all this uh, anticipation about what we're doing this afternoon, we want you to take this. We want you to have some faith in us and faith in your colleagues that put this together that this will work. This is a tough time for safety reps in the industry. There's a lot of investigations going on. There's a lot of times where safety reps are vulnerable to NRB, we're vulnerable to these things, but you're not if you follow these guidelines. We don't want out of another 50 inspections for operators to only find another three assets that have got no problems. We want it so that legislative compliance is the absolute basic that you can go for. We want you to be able to do more and feel empowered to do more. So this afternoon we've got different breakout sessions. We've got a breakout session for safety reps. That's the largest room. So that seats about 100. Uh, we've got two breakout sessions next to that and the, the room's just out in the hall here. Two of them will hold about 50 each. Uh, one's for onshore leadership. One is for asset leadership, OIMs, onshore asset. So we want you to go to them. They're going to be about roughly half an hour each, and we want you to move to each different ones. Now, on top of that, we've got a group meeting in here. Step change is going to be set up here. We've got Pound for Piper. We've also got the Major Accident Hazards Group in another breakout session as well. So if you find you can't get into the first session of the room, swap it around. We want you to see what your OIM has been told or advised to help you with. We want you to know what you can expect from onshore to support you so that you're all on the same page. We're not keeping any secrets. There's no mystery in the guidance here. Ideally for us, what we want you to do after this is to arrange a safety rep essentials day. And on that safety rep essentials day, it's not a safety day. It is a day for all of you to get together as safety reps, as management, as OIMs, and to go, how do we make this work? How do we get the engineering teams to tell us of projects that are coming on in six months so that as safety reps and as a safety, safety committee, we can look at that. How do we arrange logistics to make sure that we are definitely going to these events? How do we get training? Can we set up a training matrix so that no matter what, you do this? 
And that is your day to do that. And we want you to, to arrange that yourselves. So find your management teams and do that because we want you to move on. There's so much more that you can be doing and we want you to be supported with it. So right now, it's a break time. Food at the back, time to go to the bathroom, time to wake up, get some more coffee. So we want you to do that, but take the opportunity to network, share, talk to us. We're here as a group, come and talk to us. Let us know your, your concerns. Um, after that, uh, about 50 minutes, about 10 to 1, we'll start to assemble again for a webinar. If you've got any questions, these are, this webinar is more of a general safety rep concern webinar. So if you've got any really burning issues that you want to come up with, ask the question. We're going to do a couple of questions from the audience, but we're going to try and get some of our offshore colleagues involved in that as well. So after we've done that, starting two o'clock is the breakout sessions. We'll do another quick reminder then, but please take this opportunity to, to go. Traditionally, after, the, after we fed you, people drift off and head back home and uh, get out of here. Please take the time to visit these sessions today. We, we want you to be involved. For about two hours, we'll do the sessions, then there'll be some closing remarks, and after that, another networking opportunity. But this is your day. This is the largest gathering of elected safety reps that there's been. You have this opportunity to share. You've got this opportunity to get better. You've got this opportunity to ask Bob any of us questions. We are heavily involved with safety reps and your support. That's all we do is support you. And we, we want you to, to take advantage of that. So thank you very much and enjoy your lunch. Thank you.